Hello, Namaskara. Uh, I am uh, Professor P. R. Humpihuli, uh, Head Department of Mathematics, uh, KLS Gokhtu Institute of Technology, Belagami. First of all, uh, I am really very thankful to VTU e section program and uh, all responsible for making me to deliver uh, some lectures on uh, third semester engineering mathematics module 3 Fourier transforms and jet transforms. Hello, all dear students. Let us be connected for few hours and uh, let us see that how best we can explore and how best we can achieve what small things we are given the task that is uh, learning, teaching learning of Fourier transforms and jet transforms. Uh, before I proceed, this is my first lecture on uh, Fourier transform. This is a introduction to the Fourier transforms and jet transforms. From second lecture onwards, I'll be solving all the examples on Fourier transforms. So at the outset, uh, my request to all of you students is keep your pen and pad ready so that along with me you write and get acquainted with the terminologies of Fourier transforms, concepts of Fourier transforms, nomenclatures of Fourier transforms. Let us keep the small objective of learning what is Fourier transform, what are its applications and at the end of the chapter, at the end of this, after four or five, six lessons, uh, lectures, you should be able to write the definition of Fourier transform. You should be able to solve some examples of Fourier and one's Fourier transforms. So here I start my uh, introduction to the chapter Fourier transforms with the best wishes to all of you, dear students. Fourier transform is really used in many of the subjects. Uh, uh, communication theory, uh, control systems, communication theory and control systems is very widely used, signal processing and circuit analysis, many of the partial differential equations arising in mechanical and electrical circuits, Laplace equations, heat equations, one dimensional wave equations and what not. All these are important because without the tool like Fourier transform, it becomes very difficult to analyze the process. Here I go. This introduction to Fourier transforms, the Fourier transform is an important image processing tool. Of course, in a separate chapter known as image processing also, without Fourier transform, we can't learn anything. It is an image processing tool which is used to decompose an image into its sine and cosine components. The output of the transformation represents the image of Fourier or frequency domain and the input image is a spatial domain equivalent. The Fourier transform is also used in a wide range of applications such as image analysis, image filtering, image reconstruction, image compression. The Fourier transform is a mathematical tool. Basically, it is a mathematical tool just like Laplace transform, just like derivatives, just like integrations. All these are mathematical tools which transform a function from, this is important for us, a function from time domain to the frequency domain. Once again, from function from one domain to other domain, it is transforming. It is uh, encrypting. So inverse Fourier transform exists to get back the main image. The Fourier transform is one of the integral transforms. There are many such transforms. In the lectures to come, I will show you that you can define your own transforms and if they are useful, definitely in your name, some integral transforms will be there. Name integral transform because they use integrations. Some more transforms are Laplace transforms, Jell transforms, Hankel transforms and many are there. Along with Fourier transform, dear students will be learning Jell transforms also. Of course, in physics, FT is short form of Fourier transform. FT was first used in the treatment of single pulse phenomena by the electrical engineer. We'll be proud to say you budding engineers, you all budding engineers that many of the discoveries, inventions and concepts are developed by engineers just like Laplace was an engineer. The Fourier transform and the related operations of convolution and correlation now, all these well developed structure of Fourier transform are now finding applications in optics, acoustics, scattering and diffraction of x-rays, neutrons and electrons and a periodic effects in electrical circuits. Fourier series was dealing with periodic functions. How about a periodic? So then we have got a tool by name Fourier transforms. So before I go to the 
final slide i would like to uh, just make you aware of some of the uh, definitions because detailed definitions there are six definitions based on this whole fourier transform definition uh, structure is there i'll be showing you only one definition so welcome to the chapter welcome to the chapter fourier transforms thank you welcome to the chapter fourier transforms lesson number 1 Four year transforms. Of course, four year transform and and Z transform together we are learning. As a module three of eighteen mat thirty one. Now. suppose a function of x is there we transfer into function of s that is from frequency domain from time domain to frequency domain so now fourier transform i told i'll be writing in short today fourier transform of any function so this is transforming to some s function via integration so what we do is to so this given function we multiply by what is known as kernel of transformation so the range is minus to plus infinity e raised to i s x dx when i integrate with respect to x this s part will remain whatever the s part remains that becomes f bar s this will be useful to us from here to here we can go from here to here back also we can go now detail things are not necessary because six more definitions i am teaching you in second chapter as this is using integrations many of the properties attached to integrations definitely fall in one more thing is after lecture number 2 3 4 5 6 you come back to this introduction chapter and see once again so this has got some properties let me introduce some properties in a nutshell because of these properties fourier transforms has got very well structured uh, domain first one is linearity property just like derivatives and integrations it has got linearity property what is the meaning of linearity property fourier transform of a into first function plus b into second function plus c into third function is equivalent to you can separate this and take this fourier inside a into fourier transform of first function plus b into fourier transform of second function minus c into fourier transform of third function this is known as linearity property next one if uh, uh, scaling property it is making an image bigger or smaller if you make this x as 10x 100x bigger image x as x by 100 x by 1000 smaller image so that scaling we do if at all fourier transform of f of x is f bar s instead of understanding like this suppose an object is there its image is there if you make the object bigger and you have to make it smaller and take it to have the real object then let me make the object bigger means x bigger fourier transform of ax is 1 upon a f bar of s by a that is if you make multiplication here there will be division here and if reverse also is possible if you divide here it will become as so now this is known as scaling property similarly sometimes we have to move shift the image from one place to another place that is known as a shifting property or first shifting property of fourier transforms 
in almost all the transforms wherever integration used such properties are always available if a Fourier transform of a function suppose this is object this is image then then if at all you shift this x to x minus a what happens to this f bar s after taking transform to this f bar s there is some multiplication factor e raised to isa similarly if at all i am shifting it to left and right together this is a very very important property of Fourier transform known as modulation theorem If at all Fourier transform of a function is f bar s, definitely I know that we are directly entering the properties after lecture number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Please come back to this once again. You will appeal, you will, you will appreciate all these. Then Fourier transform of this function multiplied by cos ax will be average of these two functions this is a very well known property of Fourier transform so today dear students we are just having birds a view of what is Fourier transform to this function we are transforming to s function from time domain to frequency domain and via this integration by multiplying by weight function i told that if you change this weight function to different uh, functions and uh, if you change these limits you can create your own transforms and if they are useful in the concepts of and applications it will be in your name naturally along with that these uh, four properties linearity property scaling property shifting property and modulation theorem before i proceed to a final slide let us see the uh, some of the applications of Fourier transform via this slide interesting slide but i'll be moving this slide a little quicker please let us see this slide which this tells about is what we're going to build to this video forms. a certain animated approach to thinking about a super important idea from math the fourier transform for anyone unfamiliar with what that is my number one goal here is just for the video to be an introduction to that topic but even for those of you who are already familiar with it, I still think that there's something fun and enriching about seeing what all of its components actually look like. The central example to start is gonna be the classic one, decomposing frequencies from sound. But after that, I also really wanna show a glimpse of how this idea extends well beyond sound and frequency into many seemingly disparate areas of math and even physics. Really, it is crazy just how ubiquitous this idea is. Let's dive in. This sound right here is a pure A, 440 beats per second, meaning if you were to measure the air pressure right next to your headphones or your speaker as a function of time, it would oscillate up and down around its usual equilibrium in this wave, making 440 oscillations each second. A lower pitch note, like a D, has the same structure, just fewer beats per second. And when both of them are played at once, what do you think the resulting pressure versus time graph looks like? Well, at any point in time, this pressure difference is going to be the sum of what it would be for each of those notes individually. Which, let's face it, is kind of a complicated thing to think about. At some points, the peaks match up with each other, resulting in a really high pressure. At other points, they tend to cancel out. And all in all, what you get is a wave-ish pressure versus time graph that is not a pure sine wave. It's something more complicated. And as you add in other notes, the wave gets more and more complicated. But right now, all it is is a combination of four pure frequencies. So it seems needlessly complicated given the low amount of information put into it. A microphone recording any sound just picks up on the air pressure at many different points in time. It only sees the final sum. So our central question is gonna be how you can take a signal like this and decompose it into the pure frequencies that make it up. Pretty interesting, right? Adding up those signals really mixes them all together. So pulling them back apart feels akin to unmixing multiple paint colors that have all been stirred up together. The general strategy is gonna to be to build for ourselves a mathematical machine that treats signals with a given frequency, 
differently from how it treats other signals. To start, consider simply taking a pure signal, say with a lowly 3 beats per second, so that we can plot it easily. And let's half of a rotation per second. But we can adjust that second frequency however we want. Maybe we want to wrap it around faster? ...of plot that keeps track of where that center of mass is for each winding frequency. Of course, the center of mass is a two-dimensional thing. It requires two coordinates to fully keep track of. But for the moment, let's only keep track of the x-coordinate. So for a frequency of zero, when everything is bunched up on the right, this x-coordinate is relatively high. Those really low frequencies near zero. But all it is is the relatively simple idea of wrapping the graph around a circle. It's just a more complicated graph and a pretty quick winding frequency. Now what's going on here with the two different spikes is that if you were to take two signals and then apply this almost Fourier transform to each of them individually and then add up the results, what you get is the same as if you first added up the signals and then applied this almost Fourier transform. And the attentive viewers among you might want to pause and ponder and convince yourself that what I just said is actually true. It's a pretty good test to verify for yourself that it's clear what exactly is being measured inside this winding machine. Now this property makes things really useful to us, because the transform of a pure frequency is close to zero everywhere except for a spike around that frequency. So when you add together two pure frequencies, the transform graph just has these little peaks above the frequencies that went into it. So this little mathematical machine does exactly what we wanted. It pulls out the original frequencies from their jumbled up sums, unmixing the mixed bucket of paint. And before continuing into the full math that describes this operation, let's just get a quick glimpse of one context where this thing is useful, sound editing. Let's say that you have some recording and it's got an annoying high pitch that you would like to filter out. Well, at first, your signal is coming in as a function of various intensities over time, different voltages given to your speaker from one millisecond to the next. But we want to think of this in terms of frequencies. So, when you take the Fourier transform of that signal, the annoying high pitch is going to show up just as a spike at some high frequency. Filtering that out by just smushing the spike down, what you'd be looking at is the Fourier transform of a sound that's just like your recording, only without that high frequency. Luckily, there's a notion of an inverse Fourier transform that tells you which signal would have produced this as its Fourier transform. I'll be talking about that inverse much more fully in the next video, but long story short, applying the Fourier transform to the Fourier transform gives you back something close to the original function. Mm, e to the 2 pi times i times throw a negative sign up into that take an average. That is Fourier transform. Namely, just don't divide out by the time interval. The Fourier transform is just the integral part of this. What that means is that instead of looking at the center of mass, you would scale it up by some amount. If the portion of the original graph you were using spanned 3 seconds, you would multiply the center of mass by 3. If it was spanning 6 seconds, you would multiply the center of mass by 6. Physically, this has the effect that when a certain frequency persists for a long time, then the magnitude of the Fourier transform at that frequency is scaled up more and more. For example, what we're looking at right here is how when you have a pure frequency of 2 beats per second and you wind it around the graph at 2 cycles per second, the center of mass stays in the same spot, right? It's just tracing out the same shape. But the longer that signal persists, the larger the value of the Fourier transform at that frequency. For other frequencies though, even if you just increase it by a bit, this is cancelled out by the fact that for longer time intervals, you're giving the wound up graph more of a chance to balance itself around the circle. That is a lot of different moving parts, so let's step back and summarize what we have so far. The Fourier transform of an intensity versus time function, like g of t, is a new function which doesn't have time as an input, but instead takes in a frequency, what I've been calling the winding frequency. In terms of notation, by the way, the common convention is to call this new function g hat with a little circumflex on top of it. Now the output of this function is a complex number, some point in the 2D plane 
that corresponds to the strength of a given frequency in the original signal. The plot that I've been graphing for the Fourier transform is just the real component of that output, the x-coordinate. But you could also graph the imaginary component separately if you wanted a fuller description. And all of this is encapsulated inside that formula that we built up. And out of context, you can imagine how seeing this formula would seem sort of daunting. But if you understand how exponentials correspond to rotation, how multiplying that by the function g of t means drawing a wound up version of the graph, and how an integral of a complex valued function can be interpreted in terms of a center of mass idea, you can see how this whole thing carries with it a very rich intuitive meaning. And by the way, one quick small note before we can call this wrapped up. Even though in practice, with things like sound editing, you'll be integrating over a finite time interval, the theory of Fourier transforms is often phrased where the bounds of this integral are negative infinity and infinity. Concretely, what that means is that you consider this expression for all possible finite time intervals, and you just ask, what is its limit as that time interval grows to infinity? And man oh man, there is so much more to say. So much, I don't want to call it done here. This transform extends to corners of math well beyond the idea of extracting frequencies from signal. So the next video I put out is going to go through a couple of these. And that's really where things start getting interesting. So stay subscribed for when that comes out or an alternate option. Uh, dear students, uh, uh, when you saw this, you should have, I think you got some glimpse of uh, Fourier transforms. Uh, And uh, also the applications of Fourier transform, one definition of Fourier transform, details awaited in second lectures. Uh, I'll be just showing last slide of today's last slide. I am again PR Ampuri, KLS Gopta Institute of Technology, Bragami. This is my mail ID. This is my phone number. Let us be connected for all these uh, uh, six to ten lectures of Fourier transforms and jet transforms. See, let us see that we'll make our sessions fruitful. Till that. See you. Wish you all the best for the Fourier transforms. Bye.